Thank you, Mayor. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Thank you very much. Please call the roll. Um, there are 14 present. And is, is Marilyn Alder person Donahue, can you hear us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Older person Donahue, can you hear us? Yeah, there's a phone. There's a phone blinking. thing there, but it's blinking. It's not. No. Okay. So she may be joining mark. us. So do you want me to mark her as not here? Absent. Well, yeah, because she's not Without here. Leave. Right, and um, Alderman Bitters, Damerel are excused. Okay, next we'll go on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Older person Donahue is supposed to be in Helsinki right now, so we'll see how much of a delay we have. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There are no resignations tonight, nor mayor's appointments, nor confirmation of mayor's appointments. So next we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have one this evening, Mike Brunette. And Mike, can I have your home address, please? 1925 South 26th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. All right. I'm going to talk to you about Bridgewater, bwater.com, and not Teddy. And it's like Bridgewater has over $150 billion they invest for people, and they have this weird and crazy strategy. It's called radical truth and radical transparency. Openly and thoughtfully disagreeing on important issues is the most powerful way of creating meaningful work <coughs> meaningful relationships, and great outcomes. They record everything they do in every meeting, and it's available to every employee at every level. They are also the most su successful investment company in my lifetime. And it's like, why I'm bringing this up is, I see a body that does not invite open discussion, seldom discusses anything during the actual meetings, and I know I'm repetitive, but hey, keep it going. And it's like a lot of things are seemingly done before you even get here. And even at committee meetings, and especially one as of last week, I was told by somebody on the committee, and there's about uh, quite a few people on the committee, they said that they saw everybody but two people on the committee leaving a closed restaurant down by the lakefront before the meeting. I mean, if that's true, it's a blatant violation of open meetings law. And it's like, I don't know it's true, but this is a scuttlebutt. And kind of, but somehow things are getting discussed. Somehow things are getting done. And the same mention here, nobody understands how we keep spending money, how we keep spending money. Tonight, you're going to spend $400,000 for lakefront improvements. What exactly are they? What exactly are they needed for? You're going to put some grass in. You're going to put a cordwalk in. You're going to put a mat in there. It's nice that we have 400 grand. That's actual money. I mean, it adds up. But at the same time, we're not taking care of our streets. And I'm talking into that. It's, it's like the garbage needs to be cleaned out of them. I mean, the basic, ma the basic maintenance and going. I understand that you need more money, more money for repairs. But it's like some things got to give. You have, in my opinion, more community involvement. 
I mean, there's people on this council who ran on the whole platform of community involvement. We weren't involved, but yet I'm not seeing community involvement. And it's like even the minority report, the dissenting report, is usually the most important argument in any discussion. And it's like if everybody's on the same page, you pretty much failed. And it's like right now, I bring it up, there's a lot of balls in the works. You have a closed meeting again tonight for a competitive advantage. Thank God you have that competitive advantage. Can't imagine what it would turn out like if you didn't have it. And it's like, but Indiana Avenue, somebody's buying up a lot of properties. And I mean, this goes on what's probably old master plan, as much as I can tell if this is the thing for bringing a trolley or a light rail in, whatever. I mean, discuss it. Where did the public come out and say this is what we want? Who has the time to sit behind closed doors and come up with this stuff? It's what we do. I mean, it's what you do. And it's like, um, we will have elections again. And the bottom line is the next time we need to get candidates out there. In, Dece in late December, people need to get their things going because they need to get their, pa their papers taken care of. And it's like, and pretty much the only way we're going to change anything is getting people to run for positions. And people say people don't run because of apathy. It's because they really don't know until it's too late. I mean, quite frankly, there's a lot of good people in this town. Use them. And that's all I got. Thank you, Mike. And that would be it for this evening. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to Mayor's announcements. First of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to reintroduce you to Alderman Holshue. Uh, effective August 29th, Alderman's, older person Susie Lassard has legally embraced her maiden name and her new legal name is Susan J. Holshue. And uh, her, her phone number is the same, but her email address has been changed to susan.holshue at sheboyganwi.gov. Um, next, I'd just like to let our public know that there's an opening available on the Board of Water Commissioners. A seat comes open, and there's going to be an election for that position on 919 here, right here at the council meeting. Anyone interested in serving in that position should get a letter of interest into the city clerk by 916. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. <clears throat> It'll include items 2.2 through 2.18. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any items in the consent agenda? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items three point one and three point two uh, will be referred to various committees. And at this time, I'd like to ask the city administrator to address us on 3.3, which is an RO by the city administrator submitting the attached summary of the 2017 executive budget for the general fund, special revenue fund, debt service funds, capital project funds, internal service funds, enterprise funds, and fiduciary funds. The 2016 estimated, 2016 amendment, and 2015 actual and 2014 actual amounts are included for comparison. So I turn it over to the city administrator for his executive budget presentation. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bannerstein. Uh, I'm proud tonight to present to you the 2017 executive budget. Uh, for those of you that are uh, new to uh, city government, uh, this is a copy of last year's uh, budget, uh, roughly 30, 33 pages. Uh, as, as you know, uh, roughly a week and a half ago, you received uh, this document, a three-ring binder, uh, 396 pages, I think. Um, and again, all the management team members are prepared uh, starting next week to work with you on your committee commission and boards uh, to present uh, some of the details associated with it. So uh, please, please look forward to that. 
A couple things I want to mention is that uh, the new format uh, is hopefully something that we will continue to build on. Uh, ultimately, it will be submitted to a national organization for review and possible award consideration. I do want to mention at this time that uh, it, it, it occurred only through the hard work of the management team members, uh, their supervisors, departmental supervisors, and support staff. A special thank you goes to Nancy Buss, Director of Finance. Uh, a lot of hard work uh, was involved on, on her part. Uh, the goal of the budget is to directly uh, coordinate with the city's strategic plan. And as you know, uh, we recently uh, considered updates to that plan. Uh, each of the 89 program budgets included in this document include a mission page. Included in the mission pages are the budget's purpose, the description, budget highlights, staffing levels, expenditure summary, goals, objectives, and lastly, uh, performance analytics. Uh, so I look forward to you uh, spending some time, again, working with the management team over the next uh, couple months. Uh, one thing I want to note before I get into some of the slides is that tonight, uh, Nancy Buss put on your desk some blue pages. Uh, as changes are being made or recommended at the committee level and ultimately the Common Council, uh, we'll be handing out colored sheets with dates down at the bottom so you can keep track and incorporate them into your budget document. A couple things uh, I want to note is, you know, why these changes are before you. So I'm going to spend a couple minutes going through what changes are on these sheets versus what are in your budget document. The first page, uh, 46. Uh, the reason for this change is that originally this summary of changes in fund balance include proprietary funds. And accounting purposes it probably is not appropriate to include it as a fund balance. It's more a net position change. So we removed a proprietary related funds. Uh, the next uh, is 51. Uh, is a page change. Again, these are two-sided or duplex, so uh, we photocopied the back to each of these pages, so when you put these pages in, pull out the original pages, you'll have both, uh, both pages. So on page 51, the 2016 amended column under the expenditure, um, as we put together the 2017 budget, we changed some of the categories as, as to where budgets were placed. As an example, the municipal service building uh, was included as a general fund budget. Uh, based upon the budget you have, that's been moved to the Public Works Department. And we think that makes, I think that makes more sense. So uh, the, or the original white pages uh, had some of these budgets in, uh, identified in a different uh, category. This reflects uh, a more consistent uh, budget presentation. Page 52, uh, which is the committed fund balance in the general fund, uh, we've added a line, it's about four lines down on page 52, where it says Advanced Environmental TID Fund. That was missing from your original budget document, so that's been added. Uh, the next page is 217. On 217, uh, mid, midway into the page, uh, there's a category called Capital Outlay Storm Sewer Infrastructure. Um, 80,000 is identified for 2016 amended column. Uh, originally, uh, Public Works Director Beeble had it uh, as occurring in 2016. So the 2016 estimated column also showed $80,000. Uh, this is a project that's being coordinated by the city along with the town of Wilson and Sheboygan County. Uh, it's, uh, it's not expected because of the uh, mutual agreements to, to occur this year. So it's going to occur next year. So we've shifted that 80,000 into the uh, executive or the 2017 executive column. Uh, page 275, uh, the upper third of the page, again, a fund balance related change. Uh, under ending fund balance consists of, we've added committed dash environmental TID fund. So this is an advance that the capital projects uh, fund uh, advanced money to the environmental TID fund, and so we need to make sure we state that it's owed that money back at some point. Uh, so that, that's a new line. On page uh, 276, it's actually just a matter of spacing. Uh, we added some additional lines on 275, so a couple line items rolled up into 276, so that's why you have that page. 278, at the top of that page, um, we 
uh, originally presented to you uh, numbers associated with North 15th Avenue Street uh, reconstruction as only our net cost, not the, co the, the full cost. As you know, the county is going to be a, uh, giving a, uh, a grant or a contribution for that project. And in, in hindsight, we decided to identify the full cost of that project, including the 600000 in in intergovernmental revenue. So the reason for the change uh, sheet on 278 is adding that 600000 And then on page 279, um, in the middle of the page under street improvement category for that North 15th Street, uh, it's 1.4 and change compared to before, I think it was roughly $800,000 and change. So again, accounting-wise, we want to show the full cost because we are taking the lead in that project. Uh, last but not least, on 333, uh, this is actually a change where we took something off the page. Uh, down at the bottom of the page in your original document, it showed a $400,000 uh, pump-related uh, expense. And on page 334, my recollection is, it's, a, it's, a, an 800, it's actually an $800,000 cost, and the 400000 was invertly identified on this page. So that's the change on, on that. Now I'd like to get into uh, the presentation. I have a PowerPoint uh, set of slides uh, for you tonight. Again, every budget should start off with a mission statement. Uh, this is the city's adopted mission statement, uh, as well as the city's vision statement. Uh, for those of you that are keeping track, uh, we presented to the Strategic Fiscal Planning uh, Commission uh, parameters associated with developing the budget. Uh, we mentioned that the state law does limit our tax levy. Uh, also, the budget parameters uh, included uh, continuing to be eligible for our expenditure restraint program, a tax rate at CPI or lower, and again, making sure that we maintain a minimum fund balance uh, at least of 30%. Are we up to speed? Which page are you on, Drew? Uh, tax levy limits. I think we're about three or four in. Yeah, I've got state city restraints. Uh, next one, please. Okay. Uh, tax levy limits. Again, the state uh, restricts how much we can increase uh, our local levy uh, with the expectation unless we're uh, we're including funds associated with recent borrowings, uh, there should be no tax rate increase uh, on existing property owners, only associated with new construction that occurred in the prior year. Uh, in our calculation, 1.94 is associated with new construction as far as taxes, and in fact, the 2017 executive budget increases 1.94. The expenditure restraint program, again, uh, the Wisconsin Department of Revenue, allows the general fund expenditures to increase by the city's tax base increase, plus whatever inflation is. Uh, based upon a rolling 12-month period, I think ending in October, um, that's the percent that we uh, are el eligible to increase uh, our general fund expenses. Right now it's running at about 1.2, so the overall increase would be 2.4. And the 2017 budget uh, based upon the original adopted budget, is 2.36. So we maintain our eligibility for the expenditure restraint program. Tax rate at CPI or lower. Uh, right now, again, 1.2% is the consumer price index. The executive budget recommends for the assessed tax rate a zero increase, so it's flat. In the last uh, roughly 10 years, the highest uh, CPI was, I think, back in 2009. Last year, it was a point. Uh, 03, so it wasn't even uh, a 1% last year. Assessed tax rate, this graphically identifies uh, where we're at compared to where we've been in the last five years. You can see that uh, really for the last three budget years, 2014 tax rate for the 2015 budget, 2015 tax rate for the 2016 budget, and the 2016 tax rate for the 2017 budget, pretty much the same uh, over that period of time. Again, what was going on in 2012 and 13 is there was a reassessment of property. So that's why the, the rate actually dropped, or, or the, the rate was different. When the city reassessed in 14, that's when it went up 
to be closer to an equalized versus assessed ratio. Fund balance, as I mentioned before, 30% is our minimum fund balance level. Again, it's our safety net for unanticipated expenditures consistent with Moody's credit service recommendation. Um, 2017 executive budget uh, <coughs> retains roughly 54%, so significantly higher. The next graphic identifies uh, in, I think it's purple, where that 30% dollar amount would be versus where we've ended up at the end of each fiscal year. So we can see we're substantially above. In fact, in uh, 16 amended, 16 estimated, we're almost double. We're at 54%. Uh, My recommendation for the 2017 budget at year end, 12-31-2017, we will remain at 54% of the expected expenditure level. Budget facts, again, I apologize, this is a lot of information on one slide, but this is in a nutshell, the 2017 budget. Um, for the major categories, again, they're general fund, special revenue funds, debt fund, capital improvement fund, fiduciary funds, proprietary funds, including enterprise funds, internal service funds. Uh, of those mo major categories, proposed budget for 17, the general fund is recommended to go down, debt service is recommended to go down, fiduciary funds are recommended to go down, enterprise fund and internal service funds are recommended to go down. The only two categories where there's a recommendation for an increase are the special revenue funds and the capital improvement funds. Down toward the bottom, you can see the total expenses. Uh, the amended budget uh, for 2016 is roughly 94 million. Recommendation for next year is 100, roughly 103 million. A nine, $9 million increase of which eight and a half million is capital related. Property tax levy, where's the levy money going for? How is it allocated? You can see from left to right from 2013 to 2017 that really most of these columns, as far as the width uh, or height of these columns, remain the same. Uh, as an example, the library has remained the same. Debt service has really remained the same. So the only change, and transits remain the same. From left to right, 13 to 17, the only change is really due to a ch how we account for our capital projects. In 2013, we were roughly at $16 million of tax levy in the general fund. In the last couple years, the council, staff and council have agreed to create a capital projects fund and, and assign a levy, uh, directly assign a levy to that. So there's roughly $1, $1.1 million now that's separately identified from the general fund into the capital projects fund. And that's why you see at the top I think it's colored, um, what color is it, purple, uh, is in essence more of an accounting change than an actual increase in expenses uh, or increase in the uh, levy. In 2013, it was 21.8 million was the levy. What's being recommended for next year is 22.1, or only a 1.4% increase over a five-year period of time. Where's the additional tax levy going? and how much is it is the next slide. The amended budget again is 21.7. Recommendation for next year is 22.1 or $421,000 increase. Again, 100% of that levy increase is coming from new construction, zero from, from existing property owners. Uh, as council, you've discussed over the last uh, several months uh, personnel, both those that were budgeted but not filled in 2016, as well as your hope for changes as far as increase in personnel. Uh, so I'd like to spend the next couple slides discussing with you changes in personnel. Uh, again, public protection safety has discussed two new police officers, including an officer with school resource officer do, uh, responsibilities, new digital evidence manager, a battalion officer or battalion chief for the fire department, in the cable studio, one part-time TV production technician, eliminated positions, is one full-time community service officer, uh, one part-time record specialist clerk in the PD, and one full-time TV production coordinator. Next slide, positions budgeted in 16 but not filled, three firefighters, those are recommended to be filled for 17. Next slide identifies continuation of positions created or proposed in the second half of 2016. Again, a police officer associated with a, a grant was approved and we should be hiring that officer uh, in the second half, a part-time community service officer has been approved and we're in the process of recruiting. And then uh, uh, salary and grievances is discussing 
my request for a, a full-time budget analyst. Next slide is the 2017 general fund uh, revenues. This gives you a sense as far as where our major categories of revenues come from, again, just in the general fund. You can see that the two largest categories, almost 83%, are between intergovernmental revenues, which is shared revenue, our transportation aids, and property tax levy. The next slide compares both 2016 to the 2017, and you can see that there's really consistency between the years as far as the proportion of funding for the general fund budget. Again, there's minor changes. The levy actually goes from 42 to 43 percent. The other changes, licensing and permits, are going from 2 percent to 3 percent, and that's mainly due to um, being maybe less conservative as far as projecting amounts based upon past revenues we received in the building construction related permits and then uh, a, a slight decrease from 9% to 8% is the last line item inter, interfund transfers uh, all in all there's a $617,000 increase in total revenues in the general fund uh, again the major areas for change 273,000 and, and change is uh, additional property tax levy the building permits I mentioned roughly $200,000 more Transportation aids, unfortunately, we project to go down by 154,000. Uh, additional 121,000 for state grants for the police officers. Court fines over what was budgeted in 16 versus what we estimate for 17. The net amount that's gonna be transferred from the municipal court special revenue fund to the general fund is expected to go down by roughly 181,000. Last but not least, the planned use of fund balance. In the 2016 budget, uh, Originally budgeted was $847,000 of a deficit or uh, actual use of fund balance. Um, actually, more than that, but the net change is roughly $847,000. It was actually over, I think, a million dollars. My recommendation is a little over $200,000 in use of uh, strategic use of, of fund balance. On the general fund expenditures, again, no surprise. Uh, public works, public safety, comprise of 80% of the general fund budget. Major categories between 2016 and 2017, executive. Again, comparing uh, the uh, percent of the, of the pie, general government is going down by 2%, public works is going up by 1%, and a new category for the 2017 budget is, is called unclassified. It's reserved for contingency. The request of department heads uh, who have funds in the <coughs> budgeted for the 2017 budget is no contingencies, no fluff should be budgeted in those individual accounts. Instead, the philosophy for the 2017 budget is we will create a segregated contingency account, and should there be a need, something that's not planned for come up, then a request can be made and then we will, as a council, you will approve a transfer into those accounts, but no extra funds for contingencies should be in any individual program area. For comparing the 2016 amended to the 2017 executive, it's actually a $229,000 decrease. <coughs> in addition to, as part of that 220, in addition to the $229,000 decrease, Included in the, as I mentioned, the 2017 budget is actually $215,000 of contingency. So if you add those two together, uh, again, of unspent funds or unplanned for spending, almost $444,000 decrease in expenditures are being recommended for the 2017 budget. As you can imagine, uh, what has been traditional in many governments is that whatever you received as funds in a prior year, for the next year, everybody across the board gets a 1% increase. That philosophy is not in place in the city of Sheboygan with the 2017 executive budget. The funds are assigned only if they're needed. There is an expectation on the management team that if there is a unique need, a one department, as an example in the 2017 budget, Public Works, you can see, is going up by $300,000. A lot of the other budgets are actually decreasing. So based upon the individual needs of a particular year, department head, management team member can justify the reason for the request. 
but a standard inflationary or incremental increase is not going to be entertained for the future. General fund expenditures, uh, major changes, uh, SCEDC funding, uh, the $100,000 in contribution uh, in the past has been funded in the mayor's budget. Uh, now it's 75,000 of that's been moved to the uh, community development or planning and development budget. And remaining 25,000 is coming out of a TID 16 uh, capital projects fund. Uh, of course, next year proposed, we only have two elections versus four, versus four. so 128,000 is saving there. Battalion chief, an additional 50, almost 59, 58,000 with a July 1st hiring date. Street reconstruction materials with the expectation that a paving machine will be uh, authorized by the Common Council for, for 17, uh, 200, roughly 289,000 in additional, basically construction uh, or street materials uh, are being requested. Uh, park capital items, roughly $110,000 decrease in the general fund, but for the 2017 budget, I'm requesting a new special revenue fund be created. This will be a park forestry and open space program so instead of these capital items being in your general fund, I'm recommending for the first time we create a separate fund just because the need is so great and the need is to isolate and have a very specific discussion over ongoing capital, park, and forestry needs. Last but not least, as I mentioned before, almost $215,000 in contingencies in, that, in the general fund. The same, I, same amount is actually what's being proposed as far as the use of, a, uh, of fund balance. So ultimately, if, if no contingency amount is used, then we have a 100% balanced budget for 17. Next slide, again, is that Park, Forestry, and Open Space Fund. As I mentioned, it's a reallocation of the general fund. Uh, these are the three items that are identified. The goal and the hope uh, for the future is somewhere between 110 and maybe 130,000 uh, a year will be allocated for capital items associated with the parks or forestry program. You see these three items that would kick off uh, the new use of this fund. Block grant funds, uh, for the first time, the budget will uh, incorporate the block grant program into our budgeting process. I know it is a special program, federal program. Uh, it doesn't have the same timelines as far as calendar, fiscal calendar year as the general fund. But again, in order to present to you and to the public what our comprehensive expenditures are, I feel it was important to include that in, in the document. And you can see the projects that are, are identified. Tourism fund, again, continuation of the 8% room tax uh, for next year. Uh, two projects that I think are tourist related are the Boots and Sports Complex, as well as the Wildwood Baseball Complex. 590,000 is for the complex, a uh, sports complex. 80,000 of that 670 is for the Wildwood Baseball Complex. Again, in both cases, significant contributions are, uh, of the cost of the projects are occurring by others. The, the city's amount is, is, is limited. Meet library fund, even though there's no change in funding from 16 to 17, I thought this was an important slide to show that over the last three years and projected for next year, no change in tax levy to support the library. Special assessment fund, again, quite a few things are being transferred out of this fund. Again, all these are street related. Uh, more LED uh, street lights. I think the city has done a good job in kicking this off. Again, it results in lower utility rate, uh, cost. Uh, and then another 97,000 specifically for 8th Street, the downtown area for LED light conversion. Uh, sidewalk replacement program, 100,000. And again, the street trees are so critical. Uh, I'm identifying a, a transfer of 75,000 for a tree replacement. Harbor Center Marina Fund. <coughs> Uh, transfer from this fund, uh, I'm sorry, transfer in from the debt service fund uh, into this uh, special revenue marina fund for the $350,000 re continued repair of the marina building itself. As many of you are aware, it's, a, I think, a cedar-sided building being that is right on the water. Uh, unfortunately, <coughs> um, we need a more permanent uh, siding material, uh, a fiber uh, cement board. Um, it's, it's, it's critical. Uh, next slide is debt service fund. How much of the $9.50 uh, is going toward debt service? Uh, $1.24, and it's actually two cents lower than what's included 
as far as tax rate for the 2016 budget. Of our statutory debt capacity, 29.5. As most of you know, uh, currently there is a 60%, no more than 60% of the statutory limit. And again, we're almost half of that amount. For non-TID debt, uh, it's only 21%. Outstanding debt service, uh, again, uh, from 14 to 17, it's in that 28 to 29, nine and a half uh, range. Uh, the 20, 2017 net outstanding debt of 36 million actually includes 6.3 million. That's currently on the table as recommended by the Capital Improvement Commission. Next slide is the Capital Projects Fund. Again, this is the most robust, uh, one of the more robust funds. Uh, and again, Plan Commission uh, next week will be discussing Again, the recommendations of the Capital Improvements Commission. Changes that are occurring in this fund include, um, for the first time, we're going to be budgeting monies associated with the vehicle registration fee. This fee was approved after the budget was created last year. So uh, 791000 and change. Again, this is full 12 month, um, where in 2016, the estimated amount is only 11 months. We had a one month delay in getting that up and operating. County sales tax, uh, we will only receive three quarters, so 308,000 and change. The full year in future years are projected to be closer to 410,000, 411,000. Federal grant, uh, 389,000. Again, it's been earmarked to help fund the Evergreen Park Bridge. Uh, Boots and Sports Complex, uh, 3.5 million. Roughly of which 292.9 million in donations, Wildwood Baseball Complex, 300,000 of which 220,000 is in donations, Shaw Family Playground, 100% of the 530 is from donations, the Evergreen Park Bridge Project, which I mentioned before, Skate Park, $457,000 is the co projected cost, 200,000 is donations, uh, 208,000. Um, is coming in from another fund. Uh, 15000 is from park and open space, and then only 34000 is actual tax levy being applied for the skate project. The 200, other 208, uh, it's actually uh, community development block grant funds. The biggest project in capital projects fund, other than the sports complex, is uh, Washington Avenue from 18th Street to Lakeshore, $1.1 million. Other capital projects uh, are included in our TIDs, our TID 12, TID 16, and our industrial park. Uh, parking lot improvement associated with the Oak Brook Corp apartment pr uh, project. Uh, Helperin Fountain Plaza improvements, 145,000. Again, TIF funded. Another TIF funded project uh, is a study, $40,000 for the downtown parking study. Industrial Park Fund has two projects. One is a new turn lane on Taylor Drive for the planned Fairfield Inn, 250,000. And last is water main associated with the water utilities extension uh, of water through uh, city-owned industrial park land south of the business park as they planned for a new water elevated water tower. tower. Our internal service funds, uh, where no change in revenue are requested, uh, water, uh, I'm sorry, workers' compensation fund, liability insurance fund, health insurance fund. Uh, major changes in the wastewater utility fund uh, include a recommendation for a 4% revenue increase, and at uh, the uh, Public Works Committee, they'll be discussing more as to what that means for a typical uh, water user, a family of four, water sewer user, a family of four. Switch gear project design, this is phase one, with the bulk of the work being done in 2018, so $300,000 associated with the design phase, and then uh, an additional pump, uh, raw water, wastewater pump, Again, uh, not 100% of the cost, but uh, roughly $800,000. Uh, just a couple more slides ago, I appreciate your patience. Uh, parking and transit fund, no material changes in, in these funds as far as how they operate. One thing to note that is that in the capital improvement fund, there is $180,000 uh, earmarked for the city share associated with, with the purchase of two buses. Uh, the city needs to have those funds in hand uh, when the city places an order um, and, and receives authorization by the federal government, uh, those buses will not be delivered until it's expected to be March of 2018. Uh, boat facility fund. 
proposed is repainting the South Pier rail, replacing 52 river docks on the South Pier side of the river, and then uh, installing a kiosk uh, at the launch ramp, roughly $30,000. We expect uh, somewhere between a three and five year payback. This will help provide uh, credit card uh, purchases, uh, a printout that uh, boaters can stick it under their windshield wiper or on, under their, yeah, under their wind, windshield itself. So again, improve customer convenience, whether they want to purchase a season uh, pass or whether individual la uh, launch uh, charge. And again, it, it really makes it easier for, for those that are uh, enforcing that, uh, in fact, that printout uh, is, is on, the, on the dash. Budgets are available. Uh, at, there's an extra copy of the comprehensive budget is available at City Hall. It's also available at Mead Library. Uh, this afternoon, it went on the city's website. Uh, it's in, currently in a one big PDF file. Uh, hopefully by tomorrow uh, or later in the week, we will have it uh, in a flipbook style, which will make it easier to go through. Uh, by, the in, by the end of the week, we will have a budget brief, roughly a 20-page document, again, to hit the high spots of the budget. And then uh, working with the cable studio um, to, put, to have a YouTube video available. Again, the, the goal is to make this budget as transparent uh, so that as you receive questions uh, from citizens as to what's going on, uh, you can direct them to a budget that hopefully, uh, for, one, for anyone that wants to spend time, hopefully uh, many of the concepts, many of the funding requests will be self-explanatory. Uh, any, any questions? All they have. Board. Otherwise, as I mentioned, uh, all the bu program budgets will be discussed at committee over the next couple couple weeks. Uh, Daryl, one thing that you had in in the, in the report was about the municipal court that you were anticipating one hundred and eighty one thousand dollars in less revenue. Uh, what do you attribute that to? And I also saw in the article in the paper a couple of days that the municipal court is has has about two point three million dollars in outstanding fines. <coughs> By going to this assistance with the state, do you think possibly for 2018 that 181,000 re reduction in revenues, that's, that's gonna potentially go away? I, I think that there's probably a couple things going on here. I think there's a, 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 a decrease in the number of citations being issued. I think also the level of fines that are being imposed by our, our current municipal judge uh, is probably uh, lower than the previous municipal uh, judge. Uh, I think that, uh, as you mentioned, we hope to work with a new state um, collection process. So starting hopefully uh, uh, the last month or so of this year, uh, in fact, you'll hear from the judge next week at Finance Committee, her request for uh, funds this year yet for programming to occur uh, by our current uh, software collection firm that we get this up and running as soon as possible so we can potentially collect uh, this very large number of, uh, of fines and forfeitures that are unpaid. Uh, I th think that will significantly help uh, with the amount of outstanding collections in 16, but I definitely think uh, for going forward, I think we will see an, up t uh, uh, an increase or an uptick as far as the percent of, of fines that are actually collected. If I could so, so my number is, is conservative. If I can follow up, are you still in the process of evaluating at the municipal court going to a part-time clerk rather than the previous full-time clerk? Because I know that that past full-time clerk, a lot of her time was dedicated in collecting accounts, and now we're, we've got a very key person in that municipal court that's now part-time. Is that, is that a continuing evaluation on whether we should keep it part-time or go back to full-time? Uh, as you correctly identified, uh, in 2014 we had uh, in addition to the half-time municipal judge, we had one full-time court clerk as well as one full-time office clerk. Uh, based on the recommendation of the current judge, it was decreased from a full-time equivalent to 0.63 FTE. Uh, based on discussion roughly two months ago, uh, I think salary and grievance actually recommended it increase by a few hours per week. So we're up to 0.73 FTE and I'm recommending an actual slight increase to 0.75 next year. I'm sh I anticipate the judge at the next week's finance committee to recommend that go back to full-time. 
Uh, unfortunately, there was quite a bit of turnover in the last year at the municipal court. Uh, I think she would uh, be the first to say that you know her and her staff were overwhelmed. Again, I appreciate uh, our police chief for working with her and her staff. Uh, uh, the police department staff across the hallway has been willing to collect uh, some of those payments of fines and forfeitures. But now we do have staff that uh, has been hired and has been trained. Uh, finance department has actually lent uh, some of its staff to assist during this transition period. Uh, my hope and expectation is things will be more streamlined, uh, more seasoned staff. So uh, with the point seven five I'm recommending, my hope is that it will work. Alderman Lewandowski? No. Uh, Alderman Herman? No. Alderman Jose? No. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Ooh, wait a minute. Uh, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Daryl, you mentioned uh, at the very beginning of your uh, presentation <coughs> that the general fund um, uh, reserve balance was, was mandated by city ordinance at 30%. It's currently at 54%. You said for 2017, you intend <coughs> to keep it at 54%. So therefore, by stating that, I'm inferring then <coughs> that you are not can, you're not considering drawing down any reserves to pay for City Hall and that you plan on bonding and borrowing for that? Uh, right now, I think the uh, capital uh, improvement fund does identify $4 million, uh, but I anticipate as part of the plan commission as well as uh, the Common Council that uh, possibly an alternate uh, source as far as fun funding the first half, as we've discussed in the past, potentially half in 18, 17 and the remaining in 18. Uh, there are sufficient fund balances in some of our non-general fund budgets in case uh, the Common Council doesn't want to draw down, um, say, a full $4 million in the in the general fund. Uh, there, are, um, there are substantial uh, fund balances in other accounts that at least we can look at tapping first and then potentially if you're interested in not borrowing for the first half of uh, any city hall project for 17, then we could maybe uh, complete the $4 million uh, amount in, in the general fund. Even with potentially a full $4 million in the general fund, uh, there would still be uh, probably 35 to, uh, percent uh, still remaining, so uh, still above that 30 percent minimum fund balance amount. But, but at this 54. Not at 54. Again, at this budget, as recommended, does not rec is not recommending the use of fund balance. It's it's recommending uh, the four million uh, of expenses associated with the uh, capital projects for city hall would be borrowed funds in in, in 17. And that would be in addition to the 6.3 million. Yes, so it would be roughly 10.3. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, our Administrator Hufflin for all the work done on this budget, as well as the Finance Committee and all the department heads. Um, this now will be referred to all of the standing committees, uh, so this will be on your agenda for your next standing committee meeting to have a presentation on the parts of the budget that, that commi each committee is, uh, is responsible for. Moving on, items 3.4 and 3.5 will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. And next, we'll go move into resolutions. Item 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Bellinger authorized ent entering into a contract for the Deland Park and King Park Beach Restoration Projects. Uh, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Uh, the reason for the suspension is that this is a project, um, as Mike Burnett, Burnett uh, previously um, mentioned, that um, uh, is on, on board. There are funds uh, from the federal government of $427,000. Originally, this went out to bid, um, and it came in significantly over budget. So it was uh, put out to bid again, and now it's come back in uh, a more favorable situation and within budget. Uh, it's uh, for the sewer or stormwater sewer outfall for both the north and south beaches and beach erosion. Uh, so it, it, it is a, um, a project that is needed and we need to mitigate the, the, the beach erosion and it needs to be addressed. 
Uh, half of the funds are going to be federal funds. Half of them is going to be the city funds. And the federal portion needs to be spent before the end of the year. Hence, there's a timing issue. We need to get this contracted and the work done and completed before the end of the year. And therefore, we need to suspend the rules and move forward. So thank you. John, then I'd entertain a motion. I would make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Susie? <coughs> 13 eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is a resolution by Alderman Donahue uh, approving the fourth amendment to the WB-13 vacant land offer to purchase between the John Michael Kohler Arts Center and the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to uh, make a motion to suspend. Second. Uh, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I'd like to make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion under Alderman Bellinger? Thank you, Mayor. I would just like to know why we're suspending. Anytime we suspend, it's, a, it's an anomaly or it's outside our normal uh, protocol. So I think the people at home deserve to know why we're suspending. I'm not City, objecting to the suspension. I just would like an explanation. City planner is making his way to the podium to explain that. Before I begin, I was asked to just no announce that Mary Lynn is on the line as well. Um, the reason for the suspension on this um, item is the fact that uh, the Arts Center, as we know, we were set to sell the southern half of the Shukert Farm uh, for the Art Preserve Project. As part of their process, they tried to obtain fine arts insurance from their insurance provider and found out that um, they need to finalize the design of the building and the site plan and uh, petition FEMA to uh, get it taken out or put into the 500 year floodplain um, and make sure that it's eligible for funding under a 500 year flood. Currently, the anybody that's in development knows that it's typically around a 100 year and the property has all been taken out of the 100 year uh, floodplain which would allow development to happen but under current fine art, fine art standards and their insurance company um, they need to justify it that it's not in the 500 year floodplain so to do so they're gonna have to engage they've got an architect they're gonna engage them get the site plan going they feel by the end of the year they can get that site plan in uh, actually in October get it submitted to FEMA who has around a 60 to 90 day process for review um, and be able to wrap this up by the end of the year so we could close sometime no later than the middle of February. So this amendment is extending the due diligence period to 12-31-16 and a closing by February 15th of 2017. Staff has, we've worked diligently, we've taken care of a lot of the issues on our end. It's ready to close other than this. So we're recommending approval because we think it's still a great project. It's just a little hiccup in the road and they feel pretty confident that they'll be able to overcome this. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion on the floor? Yes. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Alderman Wolf. I just wanted to, uh, Make sure that everybody understood that this is just a hiccup. I mean, 500 years compared to 100 years. Who, who would have thought? So I support this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Donahue, do you have a vote to cast? Can anyone hear me? No. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I'm also on board docs if you if that works for you. She's not on the list. No. <coughs> we don't see you in board docs, but we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So she's voting aye? Yes. Mm -hmm. 13 eyes, but I'll make a note for Mary Lynn on 
4.2. Motion passes. Item 4.3 is a resolution by Alderman Donahue authorizing the execution of ingress, egress easements with Bank Mutual and Tom Colbeck properties as it relates to parking lot 14. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion to suspend. Is there any objection? Seeing none, please proceed. John. I, again, I would just like to know why we're suspending. Thank you, Chad. As you recall, at the last council meeting, there was a suspension of the rules for a similar document, uh, granting some easements. So as part of the Oak Brook development deal, we're reconstructing the parking lot to the north of the property. And there's two businesses, the Bank Mutual that has frontage on that parking lot and the Colbeck building that the current Relish store is in that has frontage on that parking lot and they needed access to get in. In order to get to a point of closing the sale of the property to Oak Brook, these easements, there was current easements that no longer existed, needed to be terminated, and new easements needed to be granted. Um, that project has closed and the sale occurred on the 19th um, of uh, August. So they're, they own, Oak Brook owns the property, but in doing so, we had to take some, um, we, had to, we had to move forward with allowing them to have an additional easement on this. So there's an easement directly to the east of those two buildings in that parking lot, and there's also an easement in the, in the northbound lane exiting the parking lot. There's a vacant lot at Niagara Avenue, and where this entrance is to the parking lot, we're also granting an easement through there so they can come in through the parking lot and they can leave the parking lot. So it's really just an additional easement in a current area that's used by the public anyway for these two entities to be able to get to their building. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chad. Uh, do we have a motion on the floor? Yeah. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I looked over this. I looked over this document and this agreement. And now, by easement, this doesn't entail any more construction. It's it's just reconfiguring the existing exits and that type of thing. So there's no additional construction involved. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Chad. You should sit closer to the front of the chambers. <laughs> Just as a clarification, and uh, City Administrator Hofflin brought this up, there is going to be construction in that parking lot, though, under the TIF improvements, TIF 12, the parking lot improvements. We're going to be reconstructing a good half of that lot to allow for this off-street parking for the Oak Brook deal right. to provide those 43 stalls. And that's where this issue comes in is because they had easements directly through this proposed parking lot that we're going to segregate out. But as for this document, there's no more um, construction other than those 43 stalls that's planned for this spring. And those dollars for that TID part, the, the other part of it is covered by TID dollars. Then, that is correct? correct. There'll be no general fund dollars. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that explanation. Please call the roll. Alderman Donahue. She's in the list. She's in. She's in the board docs. Okay, that's Think good. So. <clears throat> Alderman Donahue. You have to cast you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry did, I got disconnected again. Did you say can, I? Can you tell me what item we're on? The ingress, egress easements. 4.3. Yes. Yep, that's good. Thank you. Is it an I? Yes. Thank you. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.4 .4 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 75 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license application and recommends denying the beverage operator's license application 1226 based 
on his failure to accurately review all convictions on his application, his record of violations to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the reported committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Antitalabili, I'm <clears throat> saying it's so wrong, Garcia here? He is not. Um, our committee chatted with him and, and asked for some explanations as there were a number of um, disorderly conducts and our committee voted two to one to deny based on his activities. Thank you for that discussion. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Donahue. Aye. Thank you. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by finance to whom is referred under direct referral resolution number 75 of 1617 by Alderman Wolf to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget for 2016 community development block grant entitlement program and recommends passing the resolution. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Donahue? Did you open, I, did it open voting? Yep. I see. It was an aye. Yeah, I got that. Here it is. Thank you. <laughs> 14 ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is an RC by Committee of the Whole, to whom is referred RC number 131 of 1617 by the Law and Licensing and Charter Ordinance number 1 of 1617 by Alderman Lewandowski, Herman, and Rob, being subject to the Home Rule provisions of Section 66.0101 of the Wisconsin Statutes to maintain the number of older persons in the city of Sheboygan at 16 and recommends that the charter ordinance be passed. Alderman uh, Heidemann. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll take a motion to accept and adopt this resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Alderman Holshue. Thank you, Mayor. Well, after a lot of soul searching and chatting with um, some of the citizens, but also to our city attorney, I'll be voting against this charter ordinance change due to its legal merits only. I'm in favor of 16 aldermen, so how do we proceed? I have scheduled a meeting with our city attorney this week and are proposing a legal remedy to this charter that does not carry any flaws in its legality as to the current charter ordinance change offers. Addressing the legal flaws, I will propose returning <coughs> the council back to the original 16 members. In addressing the terms of aldermen, it will be proposed that those running for office in 2017 will run for one year. In the 2018 election, we'll find all 16 aldermen running. Feeling the fairness to those who had ran for an initial term of one year, they will be able to run for two years and the remaining will be running for another year. That means both groups have uh, aldermatic seats have served the one-year term. The following year, in 2019, the one-year terms will end, <coughs> and um, that their term will end, and then the <coughs> proposal will return these seats back to a two-year term for office. We will then find our terms back to the two-year terms, moving forward as well with 16 aldermen and having two aldermatics, aldermen serving each district. I believe that still some of our committees can be changed, combined, and some can't, but I think that can be a different discussion. So with that being said to my fellow alder persons, if you agree with this proposal, please let me know and I will add your names collectively to the new proposal, but only because of the legality on this I am not supporting it, and I would ask at this time that our city attorney, if he could comment if I said this correctly. 
I, I think you've described our, our discussion exactly as, as it was. Thank you. Can I please ask who seconded this motion? Thank you. Okay. Uh, under further discussion, Alderman Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to vote in favor of returning the uh, council to 16 aldermen as if uh, the reduction never occurred um, for a couple of reasons. I think more representation is better than less. Um, I'm not <coughs> persuaded by the, uh, the city attorney spoke at the committee of the whole meeting and um, said that there's a chance that um, uh, a citizen could object to the, uh, to the returning it to 16 and they could file a petition but for sex, such a petition to be successful, it would require 25% of the people that voted in the last governor's race to sign that petition. And historically, um, those petitions fail for, for lack of the correct number of signatures. So I don't think that's a too big of a concern um, in really going back to 16. Actually, I got an email, um, I'm trying to recall where it was from, from uh, uh, within the past two weeks, since the committee of the whole meeting, oh, I only know it was from, uh, from our county clerk, um, John Dolson, um, requesting that uh, that the, that it be reduced, the, the, the it stay at the ten, the reduction to ten, and uh, I had an idea that I hadn't thought of before. But if they're so concerned with mirroring the districts, the county, the city districts mirroring the county going to ten districts, what would be wrong with having instead of sixteen aldermen, twenty aldermen? You would still have two aldermen per district, and I, for one, would be willing to take a. If we don't want to increase the, the pay that we're already paying 16 aldermen, I would be willing to take a pay cut to fund the other four aldermen to get it to keep us at 22 aldermen per district, but go to 10 districts instead of eight, I guess is what we would be doing. And so, but I don't really think that the chance of somebody uh, filing a petition uh, and collecting the, the correct uh, number of signatures to oppose this is really a viable thing that's going to happen. And so uh, I'm going to, as I did when, when we passed this at the committee of the whole meeting, I'm going to be voting in favor of returning the number of aldermen to 16. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple of things. First off, having, having the fact that uh, our city, uh, city attorney has brought to our attention the rules and, and the, uh, the situation that we're in, I, I'm for reducing it to 10 to make sure that we're compliant with what we already have in motion. Um, as we have said in, in prior meetings, uh, representing our constituents uh, to the best of our ability, the only phone calls that I have received and conversations that I have had with my constituents has been to reduce it to 10. So having said that, I have not received anybody contacting me or in any way, shape, or form to keep it at 16. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, this ordinance before us, let's, we have to understand, we need 11 votes to pass this, if it's a charter ordinance. Um, I know that uh, the, the committee of the whole, I think we had seven votes, so we need four people to change their mind. Two individuals that voted against are not here, and Mary Lynn's somewhere, <coughs> but w w we know how she's going to vote. Uh, I'm going to support this. Not that I don't uh, uh, kind of want to compliment uh, Alderman Holshue uh, on her proposal. I'll support that. But tonight we have an opportunity to get the council back to 16, and that's what I want to support because I want to give people opportunities to run for office. I don't want to take opportunities away. And, uh, and I, didn't, I never heard the outcry from my constituents that we were wrong at 16. And uh, I have talked to a number of constituents and I've had some that said reduce, but I also had some that said maintain the 16. In fact, more of them said maintain the 16. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, since the committee of the whole meeting, I also was given some of this some thought. What I remember hearing was we went from Abe Lincoln four scores and seven years ago to somebody talking about um, 16 older persons lighting candles is where this all became. Um, I have not received a single call, email, anything on this until today where a lady called me today. 
So I decided to ask the people that I work with in the lunchroom, find out what it is. I think this is really a non-issue outside of here. I think this is really an issue with everybody in here on why we want to reduce or keep. Um, I really think a lot of us don't trust everybody, and I think that's why we want to keep it at 16. Um, if that's a good reason or not, I don't know. Um, but I, I really think that's the whole issue here, is it's everything that deals with in here, and not with the public out there. I really think the public don't have an opinion on this, because that's what I got from the people at work. I said, do you care if 16, do you care 10? They're like, we really don't care. Just, just take care of us the way you can. Um, I also thought about it when we look at the districts. I think some of us will end up running against each other. I think even one district had like four people running against the same person and it will leave one empty. I think that might be playing a little bit of this part too. I understand it's hard running against other people. Um, so I really think this is pretty much an issue within here. It's a non-issue out there. We should really work, work on the issues that are important to the city, which is the budget, um, those type of items. I think we're wasting a lot of time on this. Obviously, I'm in favor of 16. I just think we should do it by the book. I like what Susie proposed. But like I said, I think we just got to look deep and uh, trust the person next to you or, or don't trust. Or I think we should all be on the same page. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Attorney Adams, if this document comes in from Alderperson Holshue, uh, are the voting requirements still going to be the same with that document, that it's going to take a two-thirds to change it? It, it would still take two-thirds to change it, and it would still take 7%, not 25% of the uh, voters in the previous gubernatorial election to force a referendum. Thank you. Alderman Trester. I did get several phone calls from my constituents. I guess the people on the north side of Sheboygan are a little more informed or care a little bit more about what's going on in the city than on the south side. I'm on the north side. <laughs> well, Thank you. Uh, I did get calls, and I guess their biggest issue was not whether we have 16 or whether we have 10, but the fact that they are not being represented in the vote. They feel that this is their council, this is their city, we work for them, and we should be asking them how many council members we should have, and it should be put to a referendum vote. And just to keep the record straight, uh, there are several people that watch us on TV and watched the committee meeting of the whole, and we're very disappointed that this council is more concerned in making things easier for us, cleaning house, and getting our ducks in a row than we are about the people in the city. And so I think the best thing we could do, and I don't know if we can do this or not, but I would ask that we either A, follow uh, Alderman Holshue's example and go with what she's proposing, or that we ask if we can delay the ordinance the enforcement of the ordinance that's already on the books for one year so that we can get this into a referendum vote and let the people decide. And then if the people say they want 10 council members, then so be it. No more discussion. The people have spoken and we are listening. If the people say they want 16, no more discussion. We stay at 16 and we let the people speak. Thank you for those comments. I'd like the city attorney to chime in and, and answer your question about delaying implementation. Delaying implementation is not possible because you have an ordinance that says what you have to do. But what you should note is that we would not be moving to 10 aldermen until 2018, even under the current ordinance. It, it, this first step in 2017 is a preparatory step by holding elections for one year terms so that it could reduced to 10. So could you have an advisory referendum during that time? Yes, you could. It would be a separate matter from what Allerman uh, Holshue was talking about, but it's certainly something that could be considered. It is important to know, though, it would be an advisory referendum. Uh, a binding referendum is not possible on this, except through the process of 7% of the electors uh, opposing 
a particular uh, charter ordinance. Thank you for that explanation. Um, Alderman Lewandowski. Yes, I'm still going to vote in favor of this, and I do want to keep it at 16. And I have had people talk to me and also send me private messages on Facebook and also call me up. And the one thing that they're really against is that the council did this without any input from the citizens of Sheboygan, and they are complaining that the council just doesn't listen to them. Thank you for your comments. Alderman Jose. Thank you, Th thank you Mayor. Um, I received one, maybe two people that want to see it reduced to 10, and the vast majority of people I've talked to want to see it go stay at 16 where it is. <coughs> and um, I just want to point out, I don't know if the people that, that want to reduce it to 10, I, somehow I get the feeling they think that we, we make like what aldermen in Milwaukee make, like 40,000 a year or something like that. Uh, we don't even make like 4,500 a year. So reducing six aldermen isn't even going to save $27,000. You're talking about less than the 20, you can't, you can't pave half of one block um, of street for, 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 uh, for $27,000. So um, it's, uh, it's not a money saver. If that's why if we got some conservatives out there that, and, I, and I'm, I'm financially conservative, I'm a conservative, but if they think by reducing the, the alderman by six, you're not even going to save what one <coughs> Milwaukee alderman makes a year by, by eliminating six Sheboygan aldermen. Thank you very much. Alderman Boren. I just want to correct something that Alderman Jose said, that the Milwaukee Alderman currently makes $73,000 a year, and I believe that, that in, that's, they're also in, uh, entitled to uh, city health insurance, so it's uh, quite a bit more than 40. Okay, well. <laughs> Any other discussion? Uh, again, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to the city attorney to tell us how many votes are needed on this issue. 11 votes would be needed to pass the charter ordinance. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Donahue? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Seven eyes, seven noes. Chair votes, uh, no. No, you don't. You don't need to vote Chair because. Need to vote. Oh, okay. Eleven. Motion is defeated. Next, move on to ordinances six point one and through six point three will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, 7.1 is RC number 130 of 1617 by law and licensing to whom was referred pursuant to RO number 75 of 1617 by the city clerk various license application and recommends denying beverage operators license application 9410 based upon her failure to accurate reveal all convictions on her application or record of violations related to the licensed activity and her record as a repeat law offender. Uh, Alderman Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Uh, is Cynthia Crispin here? Cynthia, you can come right up to the... We, I had asked to hold this over after I had been contacted um, as she was out of town at our last meeting. But during our council meeting, we went over the, um, a number of different charges she had and had forgotten to put down. And she has a very long history of disorderly conducts all, all involved with intoxication. And our council or our committee unanimously denied her license <coughs> and we wanted to make certainly that Cynthia had the opportunity to speak to the council. So I will leave it up to you. Okay. Hi. Please speak into the mic then, Cynthia. Um. Not all of my disorderly conducts were alcohol related. The ones from, I think like 2009 up until about 2000, 
I don't even know when we're at. 2014 or 15 have all been um, pretty much self-defense against one of my exes. It was we both got charged with it, and I have <coughs> I haven't started drinking. I didn't start drinking until three years ago, four years ago. So I mean the 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 last two three disorderly conducts I got yes were alcohol related, but the one I was at my house and nobody got hurt. I was it was between me and my brother. My brother came over and I asked him nicely to leave and he wouldn't. So they got called and I was the verbal one, so I got it. And then I got a disorderly and a resisting arrest last year. And I was I had just gotten my anxiety pills and I was warned not to drink with them and I was going through a really bad time in my life so of course I got a bottle and I went home and I drank and I ended up going out and my, me and my sister. And the last one from December, I have co actually have court for tomorrow. I, it got dismissed by Joe De De Checo, I don't know how to say his last name, back in December it got dismissed and it just got reissued to me so, I don't know. Thank you for explaining the charges. Did you want to give the council any reasons why we should uh, vote differently than what the committee re recommended? I, I had my job up until <clears throat> I got denied at Dave Susan. I was working the whole time. I quit drinking. I haven't drank since February. Um, and that's about it. Okay, um, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I didn't hear where you were working, ma'am, with this license. Dave Susan. Dave Susan. Yes. Thank you. And then I have a uh, question for uh, Alderperson Holshue. Was there a recommendation on this applicant from the uh, police department? Thank you. I was trying to remember, and I can't remember if they gave a, a recommendation. But I, I did they? They they thought it to be. A, we're hopeful that some time could pass. Um, before she's given her license, and I'm going to ask our attorney if he would just um, go over the charges because there was more than just disorderly conducts. Right. Uh, the background check uh, indicates the following: a 2006 uh, possession of drug paraphernalia, a 2006 possession of marijuana, a 2008 uh, possession of THC. Uh, two 2008 disorderly conducts, a 2009 uh, disorderly conduct, uh, a, actually three 2008 disorderly conducts, uh, 2014 contempt of court, uh, 2015 obstructing resisting, 2015 disorderly conduct, and another 2015 uh, disorderly conduct. Can I Thank say you very something much. quick? That 2008 drug charge, I have no idea where that came from. I only have one charge, and that was for the 2006. But 2008 one, I don't know what that is. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Just to refresh my memory from my days on law and licensing, Attorney Adams, if we do not grant the license, she can still work at Dave's Who's In, but she can't work alone. Is that is that my understanding? That's correct. Someone who is unlicensed may, uh, may serve alcohol, but they may do so only under the direct, immediate supervision of uh, a licensed bartender. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Jose. Were any of your disorderly conducts and, and other charges that the city attorney has mentioned work-related? No. I was not working any, any one of them. I, I've been working at Dave's for almost five years now, so. Yeah. Alderman Liss, I will show. I wonder if you could tell me, did any of these disorderly conducts happen at Dave's who's in? Um, the disorderly conduct and the resisting arrest, yes. But I was there as a customer. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this motion? Alderman Lewandowski? Okay. We're seeing none. I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. The motion is to accept and adopt and deny. The 
You may please uh, sit down. Nine eyes, five noes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. 8.1 is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of 1106, 1110, and 1114 North 10th for the purposes of the raising the property for new private investment as part of the neighborhood revitalization strategy activities. That would be referred to the City Planning Commission. 8.2 is a resolution authorizing an application to the Wisconsin Coastal Management Program for an ADA canoe kayak launch facility at Kiwanis Park. That I referred to the Finance Committee. Item 8.3 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2016, June 30th, 2017, and June 30th, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 8.4 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Joe Lamb, President of the Mid Lake Softball Organization, requesting an agreement between the City of Sheboygan and the Wig Brothers Construction Company as they have expressed an interest in donating the entire cost of a new scoreboard for Wildwood Softball Complex. That will be referred to the uh, Board of Marina Parks and Forestry. And Public Works. And Public Works. Um, next is a motion to convene in closed session. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion uh, to convene in closed session pursuant to the ex exception of section 19.85 uh, sub 1 sub G of the Wisconsin stats in order to con confer in legal counsel for the city of who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is involved uh, to wit sub 1 discussion and possible approval um, of a me mediated settlement um, of the matter of <coughs> Gilbert, Gilbertson, Gilbertson um, ET um, versus uh, City of Sheboygan to discussion of the possible action regarding assessment litigation re relating to the Memorial Mall, um, including JFM1 versus City of Sheboygan tax years 2010 through 2013, and NRFC Memorial Holdings versus City of Sheboygan tax years 2014 and 15. And the motion to convene in closed sessions under the exemption provided in sections 19.8 sub 1 sub e of the Wisconsin stats where competitive and bargaining reasons require the closed session related to the redevelopment opportunities in the 600 block of North 8th Street. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session? One, no. Motion passes. Uh, I'd just like to advise our TV viewers that we'll be adjourning in closed session, so this will be the end of our broadcast for today, and we'll take a three-minute recess. <coughs> Thank you.